All right. <clears throat> so this is uh, round two. Yeah, same questions. No, I don't know. I mean, we'll start with some of them. So this is our first um, <clears throat> attempt at a video blog where we're both here, but we tried one <laughs> about an hour ago. And uh, my phone said that I reached my limit, and we only got about seven minutes of our like hour-long rant. It was fun. Bush league. <laughs> so let's let's recap. It's amateur hour. <laughs> amateur hour every hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a little little introduction. Uh, I'm Matt Novak because I know all of our fans out there they don't know our names. This is this is Joe Reed. We're uh, the writers of the illustrious words. Um, blog. Blog. Yeah, that's, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, I thought I would try to interview Joe and just kind of ask him some questions and just, it turned into what, what it was before, was just kind of just turned into conversations of us just kind of talking about things we like, things we don't like about bands or, or, or musicians or people. Um, kind of went off in the... People. <laughs> kind of went off on some tangents there for a little bit. <clears throat> Maybe it's actually best that that other one didn't go through. It's probably better. How right? many people There's... did we... we... We probably offended some, some people. I mean, at first we were just kind of saying general idea, then we started saying names. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Um, what does it take for you to be blown away by a band? Like I said, you just have to have the... I have to envision the, you know, the aesthetic or the environment. If I if I can picture, uh, if if I can picture what a band's trying to capture, musically, like the first time I heard a band like I Hate God, and I heard like really ugly, sludgy, metal, blues, punk rock stuff, and you can almost sense a dude with a heroin needle sticking out of his arm in like a dingy Louisiana bathroom. <clears throat> like People that kind of like suck you into their world. Yeah, exactly. Like, world you, can, you can feel that. Or if, if I can sense that um, a band's really trying to, that their music's speaking or uh, communicating uh, an experience. And you can you can share in it. I know that sounds really, you know, kind of spiritual or you know, whole, like you know, holistic. But that's really that's really what it is. That's what it takes for me to be blown away, completely blown away. Um, I'll I'll ask a question that's not on there because I know we've kind of ripped apart all those questions, and then the video never went through. <clears throat> um, what? band would you say kind of hurls you into learning about all these other more I don't know how to word, what word to say but like what there was a time where like you were probably listening to whatever was on the radio or whatever your parents were listening to where you're like oh my favorite bands are you know Green Day and The Who and Leonard Skinner and Deep Purple like what band did you hear where you're like whoa like do you remember hearing a band where, for example, I mean, you know, like I said, you got real into Nirvana for a little bit. Not for a little bit, for your whole mm -hmm. life. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what band did you hear where that was like your first band where you were like, holy shit, I had no idea music was like this? Uh, probably Napalm Death. They're one of those bands I remember hearing. Uh, and they were <laughs> so extreme and, and so... Um, I, I could hear so many of the things... That I was influenced by in their band, like I grew up listening to like you know punk rock and some metal and uh, you know some of this, some of that, and they kind of blended all those things together. And they also, I think what we were getting at too is they're one of those bands that um, I wanted to know what they were influenced by, and they were influenced by such a diverse you know repertoire of bands like uh, punk rock bands, metal bands, like all alternative <clears throat> rock bands. Like they got me into like so many different bands. Like I got into like the Pixies from Napalm Death and I also got into like Discharge and like You got into the Pixies from Napalm yeah, Death? They were they were really they were just influenced by a lot of like 
Joy Division type stuff, and then from Joy Division, it was like, you know, related bands that, like, the you know, it's, uh, Shane Embry said one of his favorite albums was a Pixies album, and huh. I was like, you know, it, like, they're one of those bands that had such a, a, a like, you know, eclectic taste that kind of opened my mind up. I think, like, if you're a kid and you're into, like, one specific kind of music, like, let's say you're just, I'm really into hardcore, I'm really into, like, you know, uh, this kind of indie rock. If, if you can get into a band that has eclectic taste, so it'll help, you know, get you into other stuff, and then you can, you know, broaden your horizons, open your mind up. That, that's why Napalm Death is one of my favorite bands. It's a weird way. I, I've, people always think it's crazy. I got into Joy Division from Napalm Death. And stuff that you don't you got really into Joy Division until you realize Joy Division isn't as good as New Order. Mm-hmm. They aren't. But it's like, <laughs> I like New Order's a lot, a lot better band. They're a lot more, but I love New Order. New Order's a, a, a more interesting listen. Yeah, I can agree. I thought Joy Division was pretty overrated. Really. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've heard, you know, obviously I've, I know their music and whatnot, and I, sometimes I listen to it, and I'm like, oh, okay, I can, I can kind of see where people are into this, and then I think, that much, though? Like, yeah, it's really, there's, not, there's not enough in it's, 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 I think the, the Joy Division thing is like, like the Nirvana thing, where, you know, since, I think I blogged about this a little while ago, like, you know, bands only have, there's only so much Nirvana material. Yeah. Where, because, <clears throat> They aren't able to make newer material because Courtney Love killed them. Yeah, but, like you almost make it makes the like the material that's left behind that that much more special. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think Joy Division fans, kind of like Nirvana fans, like really love those tracks because it's all they can get. It's all they can get. You know, and uh, I think Ian Curtis was a lot like uh, you know a Kirk Cobain. I think he was really kind of. Uh, uncomfortable with the the traditional you know formulaic rock star I think you I think he was petrified of being a mediocre band that would have lost fans and would have been kind of you know uh, I, don't, I don't dislike joy I love joy divisions music I think what was left behind was great but I think new order was just a I think a much more groundbreaking group. Yeah. You know, like New Order, if you if you if you get. I wouldn't little, necessarily say it was groundbreaking, but more groundbreaking than than Joy Division. I don't think anybody heard Joy Division was like, whoa, what? Right. But I think more people. I think it may have just been a big jump too, because I I, I always imagine, and I've never really researched it enough. I'm sure you could find this out there. I I just imagine once Joy Division obviously broke up when Ian Curtis killed himself, that they were probably like. Let's never play those songs again. Like, wow, what yeah. a fucking rain of clouds. Yeah, like, what a fucking thunderstorm above our heads for that. Let's just make yeah. the gayest, cheesiest music we possibly can. Right. Like, I, I, think, you know, I think, you know, that band was much, very much an extension of that person's psyche. Mm-hmm. And I think that those guys didn't have his psyche. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I, one of the things I like about New Order was it was very much... I think that the guys in Joy Division's personalities were better represented... In New Order. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Just based on interviews and what they've said about how yeah. they were... You know, I think Joy Division was very much Ian Curtis's baby. It was very much... And, and it very much his an extension of who he was as a person. Maybe. And like you said, when he's gone, it's like... I mean, some of those some of those Joy Division songs are really fucking... You know, like... Creep, without, creepy without trying to be creepy. Like... Yeah. That... I bet the guy in the studio and he's just like, hey, Ian, like, you're going to kill yourself in my studio because if you are, please go the fuck outside. Like, yeah, he's not a very happy guy. But yeah. people read that about, the, the funny thing is, like, a lot, of that, a lot of that comes from the fucking, you know, the, the mystique. You know, most of the shit that I've read, if you, people like Buzz from the Melvins or if you read anything about Kurt Cobain, like, he wasn't a guy that walked around mopey as fuck constantly. You know, it was... Yeah. And most Nirvana material wasn't about, wasn't bleak. That's a lot of that comes from, like, you know, labels and marketing executives putting tags on things like grunge. Yeah. Most of Nirvana's material wasn't very <clears throat> negative at all. You know, most of it was, 
introspective in a lot of ways, but introspective doesn't necessarily mean that it's miserable or sad. Yeah. You know, and most, most Joy Division songs are love songs. <clears throat> you know? True. And most of them aren't really about... It's just they're sung by a fucking epileptic who's, <laughs> you know, not fucking exactly... All there. All there, yeah. And it kind of comes across a little eccentric and kind of off kilter, but... You know, I think Joy Division... I think, actually, a lot of New Order songs are, are very negative. Mm-hmm. You know, and about bad stuff. It's just that they're wrapped up in these kind of... It's weird. Like, Joy Division was... Had a lot of uh, songs about positive things wrapped up in a very bleak package. Where New Order was a very kind of, a, in some ways, sometimes dark band that kind of wrapped it up in a kind and and you know, synth, you know th- like synthesizer or synthesized eighties dance beat. <clears throat> yeah, so it's kind of like the opposite, doing like the opposite thing without really coming out and saying it. It's like with Pill by. Uh, the dude from the Sex Pistols, John Johnny Rotten, Johnny Lydon. Pill is, you know, infinitely better than Sex Pistols. But it's really just the opposite. I mean, it's infinitely better. I mean, if you listen to a Sex Pistols record, listen to Pill is far more interesting. You know, it's it's just all around better. You know? Never mind the bollocks is that good. Like, <laughs> come on, it really blows you away even now. Like, it's, come on. Something about a bass player that doesn't play his bass is just. <clears throat> I mean, I'll, I'll take a Dead Boys record. Over, you know. Who? Blackstreet? No, the Dead Boys from Cleveland. Or like, somebody on Facebook posted about how uh, they don't like the Ramones. Like, I don't like the Ramones. It just pissed me off. <laughs> I don't like. I don't the know Ramones. why. It just pissed me off. I know there are I... a lot of people that I respect <clears throat> musically, like yourself, and a lot of people that I know. That I know personally, and a lot of people that I look up to musically that I've seen in interviews where they're just like, you know, like real Ramones, real this, and I'm just like, I fucking, I don't know, I don't, I never saw what people saw with them, I guess. It just, to me, it just, and I know at the time it was cool or it was different, but. At the time it wasn't cool. I don't know. It's, I mean, the thing about the Ramones is, am I the biggest Ramones fan? No, not at all. But. You have to put things into context, you know? Like, and, like, this person's argument for it was, like, yo, you know, like, I like a lot more punk rock bands, like Black Flag, or, you know, he named, like, a bunch, you know, the generic list, you know, Circle Jerks, Black Flag, all those kinds. And it's, like, you know, the Ramones were really just a rock and roll band, but it's about, you know, they are taking the piss out of something and doing it, you know, I think the Ramones are a lot harder... I hate that term, but harder than 90% of the bands out there trying to be hard, still to this day. I don't know, I never, I never got that from them. Like, just the, 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 like, just, the, the, there's, there's a sense of, this is 1975. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, for 1975, you know, that's, there really wasn't anybody picking up guitars and making that kind of like Yeah, I, I don't know, I just feel like there was. I don't know. And like <laughs> I don't, I don't know. The Saints were one of those bands. Maybe not necessarily that sounded where you close your eyes and go, Oh my god, I, I thought that was this other band. Well, the Blue Cheer. The there were bands that were kind of like I mean but I just feel like it's it just I think people think nineteen seventy five was like nineteen seventy five BC where it was like, Oh my god, who was who even right. knew that electricity could go into a guitar at that right. age or that year? And it's like, man, even in the '60s there were bands doing oh, sure, fucking sure, weird, sure. crazy. Like, I, I just, I, I don't know. For me, I, I, I don't understand why so many fucking people have a fucking Ramones shirt. Oh yeah, like, well, it's become it's become uh, a commodity. I just, uh, and, I and the Ramones are definitely not. And don't get me wrong here. I'm not, you know, some like you know guy from Rolling Stone magazine who's gonna tell you like you know, the Ramones almost. The Ramones are kind of like underground music's Beatles. You know, where it's like you almost kind of... I don't know if there's so much underground at all. Uh, I, I mean, like, for, for people in underground music and independent music, it's like the Ramones are like the, the Beatles. So, like, that, that be-all, end-all <laughs> thing that's, you know... But I think the Stooges were a much better band. Oh, you know? yeah, undoubtedly. Blue Cheer. Even the Beatles. The I, I love the Beatles. The Beatles did a great job. Yeah. I think a lot of people... I've had arguments with people where they're just like, you don't like the Ramones because they're popular. And you're just yeah. jealous. Screamers. Like, Screamers. And it's like, well, I don't care if... Everyone, I would love for everyone in the world to love all my favorite bands. I would love 
to go to see a Melvin show and everyone's just shoulder to shoulder talking about how much they love the Melvins and they hope that they play this album and oh, it would be great if they played, you know, the Bloated Pope or if they played this and it, but, so I hate when people say that. That's one, that's like my pet peeve, I think, with music yeah. where they're like, oh yeah, Drop Dead. Yeah, they're popular now. <laughs> Taking it oh, off. Yeah. Like, can't stand, can't it, stand it. I can't stand this band anymore. The, people like them. Yeah, there's a lot in hardcore music where you have, like, you know, the kids who once more than six year friends know about the band. It's like, you know, it's, and most, you know, most people who haven't played in bands and don't really haven't really put out records, you know, most of these independent labels are just as shitty as major labels. Yeah. A lot of independent labels fuck bands over. You know, a lot of Record independent labels do that. A lot of independent labels are <clears throat> microcosms of shitty major labels, you know. And two things about independent labels that piss me off. You know, kind of piggybacking on your point. Number one, um, a lot of independent labels use that the set the fact that they're independent labels as a as a selling, a, as, point. As a selling point to get in fuck <coughs> bands over. Yeah. And you know, it's shitty because they're really exploiting a DIY cultural as, you know, aesthetic and that's terrible to do. Yeah. But and also most of these independent labels, you know, I one of the things I love about SST records and relapse records still going on is they're such a musical diversity. Yeah. You know, you have band, you have bands that don't sound <clears throat> anything alike and it's it's it it welcomes and encourages open mindedness. Whereas some of these labels are just niche labels. Like, you know, we're the... I'm, I'm guilty of it, too. I like a lot of bands on labels that are just... We are the power violence label. <laughs> we are the this kind of hardcore label. We are the punk rock label. Yeah. You know, we're so narrowly defined that it's... You know... It's kind of antithetical to being an independent label. I mean, you think of independent music, you think of... We're trying to encourage open-mindedness and celebrate all kinds of and don't really have that anymore <clears throat> so independent really just kind of means that you're just kind of on your own and yeah. I think that especially the term like indie rock where it's like indie rock what's indie rock oh Kings of Leon and um, Tegan and Sarah something indie about that there's there's literally yeah. nothing indie about that or alternative alternative rock what's so alternative about a band that's been doing the same thing for six years yeah. like what that's not alternative you have to be anymore. independent of something <laughs> Or the alternative to something. The, 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 these are comparative phrases. You can't just say I'm 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 alternative. Alter, you're the alternative to what? Really? Yeah, I wear flannel shirts and I look yeah. like I work at a gas station. Really? Because that was huge in like '91. Like, did like, you get the memo? Like, yeah, these are these are marketed. You know, these are marketing points. I mean, these are things that commodities labels are trying to make money off of. That's whatever. But I mean, I I, I would love to see a label that has, you know, a reggae artist. A power violence band, you know, a spoken word shit, you know, an, like that's to me that's really interesting and cool. And there's some labels that do it, and there are some labels like Six Two Five Thrashcore. They do fucking specific styles of music and they do it really well. Mm -hmm. And that's cool if you want to have a label. You're just like, listen, we want to put out fucking grindcore bands, and that's fucking it. You know? Yeah. Like that's cool. Whatever. I'm not. I'm not saying. But I'm saying if you want to really, I think it's it'd be interesting to see more labels that have. You know, or at least when you get some money, like Relapse started off as a pretty genre-specific label. It was mostly death metal in the early days, and then they grew, and now they have, like, you know, Dysrhythmia, and they have... We're just listening to Cage Destroyer, yeah, we're just listening to Dysrhythmia, and, like, Relapse is cool, because Relapse is, like, you know, somebody like you likes Dysrhythmia morticians on the same label, you know? It's, like, that's what you... It's insane to yeah. think about, but that's kind of cool, because you can bring... That kid listening to Mortician could... Somehow here, just it, it's. Cool. I do that at record stores sometimes. I mean, I I would think that a lot of people that like music do that at record stores because they know whether they know the person like, like Ipic Hack Records, Mike Patton, and it's like, well, that's cool. Like I like Mike Mike Patton's music a lot. I like all the side projects he's done, and then, you know, the Melvins and um, um, Isis. Yeah, Isis. What's the brand new project? Palms. Palms. Um, pretty sure that's coming out on Ipic Hack. Or came out and I became a or whatever, and like just stuff like that, where it's like, oh well, that's kind of cool. And sometimes I'll I'll see a record at a store and it'll say Ipecac or it'll say In the Red Records or it'll say this yeah. record label, and you just go, hey, I trust the guy yeah. that runs this record label to know that it's not going to shit like shit yeah. on my face when I put it on. 
I've been burned a couple of times though, where I'm like, this is gonna be great. I get it home. I'm oh like, sure. Okay, this is terrible. <laughs> I miss that. The one of the things I think that's lost, not to be archaic and the old guy, but like, there's something about buying a, a CD at a record store, or buying a, an LP at a record store, and gambling with your money, mm-hmm. and going. I kind of miss. Buying records, I hate it. I, I miss... We'll go do it. I miss... Let's go right now. I miss, <laughs> like, I, I miss kind of like... Well, I don't record stores anymore. But I mean, I miss like, you know, getting... Plus, I don't have kind of disposable income. Kind of, records are kind of more expensive. But it's... You know, it, I miss kind of like... You ever buy those records when you were younger and... Uh, you didn't really like it, but you convinced yourself it was good because you didn't I mean, want to trade it in. And you, that, but, what's holding that phone up now? There's a um, bunch of vinyl in there. When I did... You must not have watched my vlog. How goddamn dare you? When I, I said I was holding up records, I said I got this one because it looked cool. It was a dollar, and I got it specifically because. And this was I, I, if, if I ever get a little bit of extra money, and I'm not talking buying a thirty, forty dollar vinyl, I'll go to the clearance section. It'll be like dollar, you know, one to five dollar vinyls in there, or sometimes just CDs. And I'll like, oh, this album artwork looks cool, and I'll go, this, you know, it looks like it would sound cool. And, t- and that gamble, like you were saying, is really fun and interesting, and you don't know what it's going to be like until you pop in your CD player. And sometimes, right. I'd say eight out of nine times, it sucks dick. Like, it's, it sounds like someone's putting a flaccid penis in my ear. Right. Just, sh- like, and poop's coming out of the flaccid penis. Right. It's just shit. But sometimes it's really good. Sometimes you're like, wow, I would never have heard this if I didn't, you know, do yeah. that. But. So Mike Patton, though, you, you a Mr. Bungle fan, or, or, you a, or are you a Faith in the Moore fan, or both? Um, I don't, I'm, like I, I told you the other day, I'm, I'm still kind of new to the whole thing. I mean, Faith and Moore, I, it was, it was pretty good, but I really liked, um, Tomahawk. And that had the, uh, drummer from Battles, and then obviously, more importantly, the drummer from Helmet, the same drummer, but, um, and, um, Phantomos was really cool, like, just cool. the idea of Phantomos and just, I always loved their interviews because they were just so wild, you know, they didn't seem like anybody was really yeah. saying anything that the interviewer wanted to hear. Like, Buzz was just kind of saying whatever, and then um, everyone was just kind of, you know, saying what they were going to say. And <clears throat> it really seemed like four mad scientists. Not with, with Phantomus, it just seemed like four mad scientists just getting together, having an amazing time, and just playing weird music. And it seemed like that's what Mike Patton kind of tried to do. He went from, you know, scoring films <clears throat> to, you know, Mr. Bungle to Faith No More, not in this order, but, you know, and... Did all these yeah. crazy different things, and you're just like, I don't necessarily think that to be great you have to start a a folk band and then a thrash band and then a salsa band and then a grindcore band, but it seemed like he did everything pretty honestly and pretty yeah. pretty goddamn good, and he always seemed to be so fucking sharp about it. Him and Buzz both, they always seemed to be so like just on their toes all the time. Like, right. if the interview slipped up and said something stupid, they would not, like, attack them, but attack them. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't really allow for somebody to be lazy. And that's that's one thing that I, um, prolific, you know, it's one thing that I, hard workers in music is something that I think is really cool. And to not have a musician, I mean, I was obsessed with Trent Reznor for years and years and years. And now the older that I get, I'm just thinking, not that I'm like, <laughs> for years and years and years. <laughs> From when I was 15. In my younger years. I was <laughs> when I was 13 until 18. Boy, I can't even remember how long. Oh, yeah, it was uh, last week. <laughs> but where I thought it was so cool, they would, he would, in interviews, they would say, like, how long, what, what took you so long to write these albums? And he was like, well, I was in a strange place personally and mentally. And, and then you hear interviews with Buzz now, and he's just like, what was the inspiration of this album? I don't know. It was good music. We, we, we liked it. We recorded it. Now we're on tour. I don't know. Does yeah. it sound anything like your last album? Fuck no. Our last album was our last album. Now we're playing this. And it's like, I really, I love that. I yeah. love that vibe. That's something that I really adore in, in both the Melvins and with Mike Patton for different reasons that they just seem like they're just, just working all the time. I, blo- I blog about that a lot. I mention that a lot with bands. It's like, you know, even if I'm reviewing no matter what band, I like when the influences uh, arise naturally. Yeah. Bring them out naturally. Like one of the things I liked about Faith No More and Mr. <clears throat> Bungle a lot, and Melvins too. And, and even, you know, bands like, you know, a band like Makatazo from Spain, like a grindcore band. Like, just let your, let them, let me hear the influences without you having to. Check it we, out. We really like this too. And now, and now we like yeah. jazz to hear it. It's yeah. like, if you have to bang me over the head with your influences, it's it, like, it probably, it probably it, sucks. It's like movies where 
say this is a horror movie and we're just sitting here and then there's like a window and there's a person in the in the in the mirror. I feel like most music goes rather than just hinting that there's someone out there. I feel like they draw a big arrow like there's the bad guy. Do you see him? And it's like you don't have to do that with music. It's like my influences are Led Zeppelin. Do you yeah. hear the bass drum? It exactly. sounds like John Bonham. Like. Like, yeah. it just, I don't know why I shouted so much for that. Yeah, exa- I, I, yeah it's like the, over, the overzealousness of, like, obsessing over a few influences. It's just, yeah. And that, that just comes from better songwriting. Yeah. You know, Mr. Bungle uh, is a band that, I'm not going to lie, when I was younger, I, I hated. I actually got into Mr. Bungle from the, the drummer from Ramsey's and Electric Wizard. Cites them as, like, a, a, one of his favorite bands ever. And I was, you know, like, most metal fans of this blog or any other, you know, part of the world. No one's watching this. But, like, most Electric Wizard <clears throat> fans, like, you know, are hardcore fans. Like, they're great, you know, they're, uh, one of those, you know, type fans. And I was really, I was surprised that they're, that they had such a wide variety of influences, too, because I think Electric Wizard, they also let, they have more, more dynamic influences than people can really hear. A lot of people hear that shit and they hear, oh, it's Sabbath, but heavier. Yeah. But I was, I was like, oh, I'll give Mr. Bungle a shot. And it was really better than I remembered, you know, when I was younger. I think I... Probably not because we were talking about them the other day. Yeah. They're, they're really, uh, I mean, they, they did it so cleverly. You know, a lot, of, a lot of bands can blend certain styles of stuff together. But they, they do it in a really... A really, a really unique way that was that was all their own. They didn't write pop songs uh, like some of their peers did. Mm-hmm. Like Red Hot Chili Peppers. I get that, that that comparison. You know, people compare the Red Hot Chili Peppers to Mr. Bungle all the time, and they have this sort of I rivalry. Love, I love the rivalry that I heard. But about that, but, that. But, but the Red Hot Chili Peppers and Mr. Bungle, it's like comparing the apples to Buicks. Like there's two like the Red Hot Chili Peppers are a pop rock band. Yeah. They write pop songs. Like yeah. they incorporate some other styles. Mr. Bungle wasn't. Never wrote a song in pop structure, mm-hmm. you know. So it's really, you know, it's it's, uh, it's to me it's not a fair comparison. But I, I think Faith No More was, uh, was Mike Pat- is still Mike Patton's best project. Um, a band that also I a lot a very unique band that had a lot of different influences that they incorporated in a cool way was Acid Bath. Um, still, uh, there aren't. Many bands that sound actually there aren't. I can't think of another band that sounds like Acid Bath. So, and that's still really, really. I wish that's one of those bands. I'm gonna. I was hopefully gonna blog about them soon, but I mean, they're they're my top band. I want to see reunite. Is, Acid is Bath. Is Acid Bath. I want. I, I want to see. About Acid Bath. They're a, they're a band from New Orleans uh, from the '90s metal band. They incorporated like uh, they were at the forefront of like sludge metal, with, like a lot of blues rock influence, like blues influences, like in the riffs. Um, they they incorporated death metal, black metal, industrial music, uh, you know, hard rock, uh, a really a unique sound all their own. I really really wish they get back. They do a reunion. So all these bands are reuniting, especially '90s bands, and I I hope they would. I hope they get back together or do at least some one more album or one more thing. They're a band that I really want to see uh, live once because I never got to see them. And they're just really cool. They, they, in terms of artwork, we were talking about artwork in the last ranting conversation. Uh, they used to incorporate art by uh, serial killers, like John Wayne Gacy they used, and they used uh, Jack Kevorkian. Uh, another band that when you, you could hear, they created a, a, a distinct imagery with really music. Yeah, it's things. really, it's, it's cool. And they reminded me, you know, when I listen to Faith No More, same thing, like they influences just come out, you know. So actually, I think Faith No More is one of the best bands from the eighties. Uh, I think so. Yeah, definitely. For that, for a decade that's really kind of known for generic bullshit music, at least in mainstream culture. Uh, obviously, you know, coming from a hardcore and punk background, eighties were chock full of great bands, but like Devo and Soft Cell. Mm-hmm. Devo, Devo, Devo. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Devo fan. I'm a huge Devo fan. Uh, Kent, but they, uh, I think No More is probably one of the better bands of the 80s. 
What else can we talk about? That we didn't talk about for two hours. That didn't even go fucking through. Um. <laughs> no, I, uh, we, well... I have all the... We, we touched upon, um, here, um, there's a drawing erase board next to the camera here, and it says, um, how much do you notice or care about artwork? So we touched on that. Essentially, Joe said that it's, you know, he, he looks at it, he thinks it's cool, but he, it's, it's not a deciding factor if he likes or doesn't like the band. We said best frontman. We went from Iggy Pop for you. I'd say Iggy Pop, too. Uh, best female performer, I said, was Alice Glass. You said was Kim Deal? Uh, yeah, uh, I, yeah, Kim Deal's one of them, yeah. Kim Gordon, too, but Kim, Kim, Kim Deal. Kim's. Uh, <clears throat> that's the front man thing. I, I, Iggy, uh, uh, Henry Rollins. I haven't heard the new Stooges album. I'm waiting to listen to it all, all the way through. It, it got bad reviews. Uh, by, for it being, I can't uh, imagine the Stooges album coming out. People would be like, "It's really great music." That's uh, kind of the point, <laughs> like that it's not what you wanted. You it know, to people. Be. And, and there's, a, there's a, any like you know music snob who says the Stooges, you know, just kind of didn't make. Funhouse <laughs> is infinitely better musically than I than a lot of rock albums. It, it incorporates yeah. a lot of freeform jazz, and you know a lot of blues and just talk about a lot of different styles and no band that that to me that's the best rock record of all time uh it's a major accident you know because the Stooges is one of those bands too that didn't try they didn't sit down like all right we're gonna we're gonna do some jazz we're gonna do some blues yeah we're gonna we're gonna write up you know we're gonna get the grit out and we're gonna you know have pie charts and we're gonna have a meeting about how mm -hmm. that's not how it was you know it was probably a bowl of coke some glitter, quaaludes, and a guy with a trumpet it's pretty came much in. When we hang and out, yeah, it's like, like and a guy with a trumpet came in. <laughs> just walked in and started like playing the saxophone and shit. Like, but I've heard the new Stooges record is bad from some from more than one person. I've yet to listen to it. Who told you it sucked? Uh, well, there was a reviewer on a. Enemy gave it a pretty bad review. Okay, and, uh, that's, and that's a <laughs> moment. No, I mean, I respect, you know, I respect major music critics, at least it's in some regard that they, you well, know, those at, critics least, are at, least, assholes. at least for a band like that, I'm an asshole, but they, it, it, it didn't sound, the, well, from what I'm hearing, I, again, I haven't listened to it, 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 it's, uh, nothing really pops mm -hmm. out of you, you know, no pun intended. Like, a Stooges record, you know, I think they've, they've such historic albums I don't think the Stooges should be making new music under the under the name of Stooges. Hmm. I think that that name is too because they're never gonna put out anything that is going to give people the same feeling. I think people listen to a new Stooges record and they're expecting to be blown away instead of appreciating the product that's given. Mm -hmm. And uh, some sometimes a lot of bands become victims of their own. Of their own creativity and their own name, you know, oh, yeah. which sucks. Which, which is, is fun. Fun, I'm which assuming un unfortunate, you know. But <clears throat> but a band like uh, we were talking about before, um, in an in interview I saw with Mike Patton where he said, actually I don't remember how it was worded, but they asked him like, what's the coolest thing about something? Something got brought up about the Melvins, and he was like, oh, they're great. Like it's a band that just continuously reinvents themselves after every album. Yeah. No album sounds like their last. People that loved Houdini heard the next album were like, "What the fuck?" And they heard, and you know, the people that heard, you know, Nude with Boots were like, "What? This is the fucking Melvins." And Mike Patton always said he's like, "Man, I get so bored musically. I have to start a new band." He's like, "These guys rewrite their whole fucking sound and keep the same name, which I think is cool. It works well with the Melvins, but some bands, it's like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's." It, it's like we were like we were saying in the last vlog. It's kind of like or in the last video that didn't go through. It's like going to see a comedian and you're laughing your ass off. You're laughing your ass off. And you see him again in a year and he has the same jokes. Yeah. He just says them slower or faster and it's like, it's the same thing with anything. Like okay, Taco Bell's great, but I want some variety. Right. Like okay, like 
And I think some bands do that, and some bands try to be too weird. They're like, oh, well, people liked this last album because it was innovative and it was different, so we're going to get a kazoo player, someone's going to play a trumpet, that fucking guy with the glitter that knows Iggy Pop's going to come. And yeah. <laughs> and, and then they, it just defeats the whole purpose. But The, Mel- the Melvins are probably definitely one of those bands that uh, challenges the audience regularly. That's a good way. You know, like they... They challenge the audience to stay Melvin's fans. I wonder if the Melvins challenge themselves to be in the Melvins. I guess, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 there are some Melvins albums I, I don't really, I don't really care for, but they're. That's the point, though. I think is like, I don't, I don't know anybody who likes every one of their records. I, mean, mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, I, I can appreciate all of their records, um, for for being, uh, you know, you know challenging. But I mean, Sonic Youth is like that too. Uh, yeah. Sonic Youth's kind of tested their their sound and the audience. You know, Sonic Youth has has some rock records. You know, then they have some albums that are more experimental and a little, little noisier, a little. Uh, you know. Looks like I have a boner. There's stuff with a the, the Sonic Youth stuff with Mersbo from Japan is really cool. Um, Japanese noise musician like that's they're you know. They're one of those bands too that's always kind of. I think if you're gonna stay productive in a band, you know, I, I, I blogged about this a while ago. Like these bands that I love, you know, hardcore and punk, and all the subgenres of it is my favorite kind of music. I love my favorite hardcore punk bands are the bands who write twenty eight songs, put up two seven inches an LP, and then quit. You know. I like that. Up, I like up that. until the quitting part. No, I, I like that because it's you can only take that music to its logical end, and you know if we're gonna. I like I appreciate I like a band who appreciates a short lifespan. So you know, it's kind it's, of we're, I always use an analogy. Get, so it, it, you figure kind of like fucking a hooker and they're trying to take her out on a date. It's, a, it's just kind of thing where it's like gonna, all right, if, this if is you, a one night stand kind of thing. If you tell yourself, hey, listen, you know, because these bands that that put out, if you're a hardcore band, you have seventeen records. It's chances are five of those records blow. And or you're writing, or all you know, of them, or you have a lot of throwaway songs. If you if you're gonna tell yourself as a band like, listen, we're only gonna release this much material. You're gonna write quality shit, or at least the highest quality shit you can. Yeah. There's only gonna be so much of it. It's like if my life, if I only have five years to live, I'm gonna live it up for those five years, you know. And I think that because let's face it, a lot of independent music fans, especially in the hardcore and punk world, aren't. You know, there are too many people that aren't narrow-minded, and you know, if you try to, you know, it's hard to do a black flag. You know, they put, they really tested that sound, but they alienated a lot of their fans, and it's like, unfortunately, you know, if you're going to be a, in a band for so many all those years, you know, you have to experiment, but you also have to experiment at an early stage as a band. Too many of these bands want to put out eight of the same records, and then when they're done and over it want to experiment, and then they wonder why their fans get mad. Well, so we've given them eight of the same record. You yeah. built a fan base cultivating shit. Well, I mean, like, you know, it's like, it's here's like some feeding, more poop. It's like feeding a cat, like, here's turkey, turkey every day, turkey, and then all of a sudden, you're like, man, you're a vegetarian now, five years later. The cat's <laughs> going like, fuck you, I want turkey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, I think too many of these bands don't, too many, too many bands don't embrace experimentation and encourage the fans to want experimentation. The Melvins have their whole career. Sonic Youth has. And their fans expect experimentation. It doesn't alienate them. And the Melvins aren't going to put out a record that Melvins fans are going to be like, I can't, believe they, I can't believe they put a kazoo in it. You know? Yeah. And walk away. But, you know, it's harder to do in genres like hardcore where, you know, fans are a little bit more passionate about being a purist. You know? Yeah. And I think that's why if you're going to be a hardcore band, you're going to be like, listen, if you want hardcore, cool. I like playing hardcore. I like playing power violence. I love it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write 28 fucking power violence songs. You're going to get two 7 inches, one LP. We're going to quit. Now, we're going to quit, but we're going to give you some fucking quality shit before we do it. I respect that in the band. Yeah. The band's going to say, hey, listen, we're not going to experiment. We're going to play this one style of music. We're going to play it only for this while. Fucking enjoy it. That, I respect that. Mm-hmm. If you're releasing 20 fucking records and you're giving me half ass shit for 20 years, don't call yourself a legend. You know what I'm saying? You're just trying to make a career out of never experimenting. We're talking about Kiss, right? <laughs> that's, 
Some older Kiss records are good records. No, they're not. Have you ever listened to rock and roll over? Yeah. It's it's, a, it's there's some Kiss has some good material. Like, I they, think, they do. I think deaf people even hate Kiss. Oh God, that's I, I hate everything Kiss stands for. <laughs> they embody all the all that's wrong with capitalism and all that's wrong with humanity in general. All that's Some, clearly right about capitalism. It's <laughs> clearly that's, working. That's, that's a really fucking good point. But they're like... <laughs> some of the tunes are undeniable. They are. I mean, I... I wish I could say that they aren't. And also, hey, like I said to you before, you never leave a, you never leave a Kiss show with a frown on your face. If you paid money to get in, you did. Like, they... And one thing that Kiss does teach bands if they ever give a lesson aside from how to sell tampons and turn a profit kiss tampons kiss tampons the tongue goes into the it's really fucking stupid do they really have those they have tampons yeah they have they have tampons I would not do caskets that. they don't have a new record but they have caskets I knew they had caskets all the way down to oh, lip yeah. gloss and anything you could think of don't they have pop kiss uh, they pop probably, probably do um, like he does the yeah they they were up yeah I think so but, you know, be a good live band. Put on, you know, if you're a band that... I, I was really into death metal when I was younger. Oh, I still like a lot of death metal, but it's... In my opinion, some death metal bands are the worst live bands I've ever seen in my life. They stand there stoically on the stage. Swing their hair. Act like they don't swing the hair. Act like they don't want to be there. It sounds like you're listening to the record muffled because it's live. <laughs> and you'd rather just go home. And th there's no point. The crowd is standing there reversing their frowns and not into it. There's no live experience. That's why, as a young kid, kids gravitate towards hardcore and punk. The live show is an experience. And the band live is in many ways a different band than on record. You know, the, I'm sorry if you go see, like, you know, our friend Bowles just went and saw Infest uh, at the Maryland Death Fest. And when he came back and was rehashing this experience to me, it was, he explained the experience of stage diving, of the crowd participation, of the singing, you know, and... He said it was awesome. Yeah, he said it was awesome. And, like, a kiss for being a stupid rock band at least gave you something to watch. And they at least told bands, hey... Anything to distract me from their... Anything, either kiss. way. But it's, it, the point is, whether you like the music or not, it's... Don't... The audience is going there for an experience. And too many bands think... You know, oh, but they're just coming here to hear some music. It's like a live show is not just about music. Yeah, it's not. I mean, I've seen, I've seen, <clears throat> I've seen bands like we were talking about before, where like Trash Talk, where I heard them, I saw them live, and I was really blown away. And then I've I've gone and I've seen Nine Inch Nails play before, and I've been blown away for completely different reasons. Um, visually blown away by Nine Inch Nails, you know, a few Nine Inch Nails shows, and I'm like, whoa. That's I didn't know that you could do this like on a live setting, and, it, and being blown away by the violence and volume and dynamics of trash talk for different reasons. I mean, not everybody goes to a show to get their ass kicked. Yeah. Not everybody's a hardcore kid that doesn't, you know. Oh, this show's lame because no one got their nose broken. But yeah. not everyone wants to go to a show because. Oh. Anybody thinks that's a douchebag. I mean, that's not. We won't go there. But. Um, but. I know that, like, not everybody goes to a show because of the, the light. You know, I, I know, I realize everybody goes to a show for different reasons, but I've been blown away, I would say, from far left side and far right side. And I remember being really blown away. I know I've said this band, like, ten times now, but I was really blown away when I saw the Melvins play when they did their Freak Puke tour. So they came out, and everyone expects them to come out and be, like, you know, stereotypical band, I guess, say, like, hey, we're the Melvins, and they, they come out with, like, Hooch, or, you know, yeah. a song that everybody wants them to play, you know, like, oh, Honey Bucket, or whatever. And they came out, and they played really quiet, really, really, really slow, nothing built up, and it was so quiet that people were in the audience, like, do something! <laughs> like, and I thought that was so cool. I, I think they went on for a good, like, 15 minutes where they were just not playing anything really like the bassist the you know the stand up bass um, Trevor actually from Mr Bungle back in the day oh, I think there's a fucking spider in my shirt um, you know, just playing like just like one note just yeah and it was just like that blew me away for reasons that 
trash talk blew, blew me yeah. away for, for totally different, you know? But I don't know what the point of all this was. That's that. No, no, I understand what you're saying. But that the floor didn't blow you away. No, that was fucking terrible. That band was awful live. Because when I heard the record, we were saying before, like, you know, Night Full of Kicks. Night Full of Kicks. That's the name of the fucking song, the self titled. We were trying to think, maybe we should have just denied that we didn't remember the last one. Yeah, we totally knew the name of that song. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, we couldn't think of it. But when the song starts off, it's the, you know, the floor tops. Something is definitely fucking the dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's just like, I just pictured him just like being on the floor where, because you know how he plays his yeah. drums, like way the fuck up here. I just pictured him just like playing like, because he, his drums are huge. Like, I pictured him playing these like 28 inch fucking toms, like, boom, 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 boom. And then you see him live, and it's like, dun, 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 dun. and it was just all the same. And it was, I felt like the album was just so overproduced that you wouldn't saw him live, and you just thought, how dare you think that you can even pull that off live, kind of thing. But I, I think that's you know really, you have to understand too. You're seeing a band in the midst of a tour. You yeah, know, but you it's... also have to understand though when you put out an album like that that you're going to be playing at the smaller venues that you what? should know that you're not going to be able to hear this live, but. I, don't, I don't also don't agree with thinking that, well, you're in the studio, you have the ability to put four guitar tracks. Well, you only have one guitarist, yeah. but we have the ability, we're in the studio. I do agree with that, especially owning a studio, knowing that I've never told a band, make sure you can do it live, you know, keep the mistakes in. There has to be a balance there. I don't think that you should necessarily only, I, I don't think it was wrong that Floor did it, I just wasn't impressed. I was really impressed with that, with that show. But... Um. I thought they were really, uh, you know, and it, I was I was not unimpressed with the drumming only because I was imp- I was very impressed with the drumming. I'm just saying like this, just the sound. Yeah, I, I think that the you know, like I said before, Torch, you know, the band that they are now, is a much more polished version of what that band. You know, it's like that band's inevitable. It's like the band's logical end to a poly, a logical, a, a polished logical mm-hmm. end. You know. Like, that's a good instead of polish logical logical yeah logical like they're they're really so I think I didn't expect floor to sound as dirty and as you know uh, I guess as, as 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 harsh as their older their older days because they are frankly playing out of different equipment probably and usually probably and probably aren't you know it's difficult to really recapture that record because that record is so unique sound man. but it's still it was one of the best live experiences I've ever had. I'm not I smoked a lot of weed at that show, so that was like you have to <laughs> and Manny kept. Dude, I want to flow. Like, dude, just flow. You're <laughs> what? And I was like, Manny, stop! And he was like, Dude, you're high. Get high. And I was like, <laughs> Yeah. yeah like, but no, I, I'm a big. Uh, that's my favorite drummer. What's his name? I have no idea. <gasps> you don't know your favorite. I know his favorite record. Are... I know his favorite record is Morbid Angel, Formulas Fail of the Flesh. How do you know that? Because I asked him what he, what he was, and he said my favorite album is Formulas Fail of the Flesh by Morbid Angel. And I remember being like, okay, that's really, he just hmm. he hits the drum harder than anybody. So I always liked Cavity. I know it's a different drummer, but I always liked Cavity too. Cavity was a great Cavity was another good band from Florida. <clears throat> Cavity's good. They have, uh, I think that one of their LPs accidentally. Because um, that's what the singer of Cavity formed Floor and then right. Torch. They they were uh, they were they were they were, they, were uh, they existed alongside one another. Did they? Yeah. They're, they're, but Cavity was first, and then Floor and Torch were by side. By side. Floor well, originally started off as a different band. It was really like uh, Dove, and then they kind of evolved hmm. here over here. You know, when Floor kind of first started off, they were like a God Flesh, um, you know, very harsh, heavy kind of band. And Cavity was a little more you know, sludgy. I hate God. Groovy. Groovy kind of thing going on. Uh, yeah, Floor definitely. I'm, I'm happy to see you know they're one of those. They're a real success story in, in independent music. I mean, that's a good record. Uh, that definitely stood the test of time. I think you know. 
I like floor their other material. You know that 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 floor the dove stuff mm-hmm. is some of it's really good. It's not as good as the, as the self title. That's just those are really good songs. I like the self title album a lot. Like I I I'd, I'd be interested to see what they're another band that I like to see release something new. You know, Torch is good, but it's not it's not the same approach as floor. Yeah. You know, it's I like Torch a lot, but it's it's almost like people get that like they just to Brazil. It's like it's really good, but it's not Jawbreaker. You know, it's like the. You know, I like to see what Floor would do now. Because uh, again, that's one of the greatest like accidents. Uh, like a few years ago, that self titled record got re released on No Idea. Like a few kids kind of listened to it and bought it, and word of mouth just spread about man, you have to check out this band that broke up. It's amazing. Like you know, it's. I remember picking up that record and listening to it every day. Mm-hmm. You know, and I I still never owned that album on CD. Really? I refused to buy it on CD. So your favorite drummer's on it. You love it. Yeah, and I have never owned. I don't it. know his name. I don't know his name. You're and a I don't own the CD. Man. I'm, I'm a. Here's how. I, and the reason why is I love that record. Ass. I love that record because I because if I have the LP, I have to listen to it all the way through. Yeah, and I love listening to it in its entirety. You can listen to CDs all the way through now, though they have they have players. I, like the, I, don't, like the, I don't like the temptation of having to skip. But that's, <laughs> I I want to go to my. Fa- I like the I I like the fact that I have my one original floor LP, and I just I I've never bought it on CD. Huh. The thing where Andy has it on CD, if he has it in his car, I'm, I look at him like. Why do you get why? <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know. You're just, <laughs> I just yeah. Andy has it. <laughs> no, no, it's like no. It's, I I just think like it's. I it's, only have it on LP. No, I, I hate to be that guy, but it's there like, is I, no new. I, I I like the fact that I own the my one floor LP. If something happened to it, I buy another one. But I'm gonna come over to your house and just kick it. I, and I'm not buying the CD. I'm not doing <laughs> it. But I've never learned the drummer's name. Good, Todd. Is that his name? I think so. Oh. But. Now you done fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> well, you want to talk about anything else? Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> that was may have been better than the first one. I don't know. Probably a lot shorter. Hey, it actually recorded the whole way through this time.